Alrighty guys, we are back out San Diego Bay bright and early. It is day two since the boating quarantine has uh, been lifted. So as you can see, it is busy as heck out here. Or, or maybe not. There's literally nobody around. My favorite kind of fishing. So we are in the super far back bay. We got out really early for the really high tide. It's a positive uh, four or five foot right now. So we can come back really, really far. Get into a couple areas that we have not been able to fish yet since the fish kind of don't come up in the really far back bay when the water's a little bit lower. Um, so we're gonna get up on these flats, see if we can find some fish. Let's get out there. Done yet. Guys, if he stops moving, I want to show you something really cool. So these guys are born similar to a speckled trout with two teeth. As they get older, they generally lose one. So you almost never see two teeth. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on the camera, but this guy has both his front teeth still, which you never ever see. But that's kind of cool. A little tiny. Corvina right there. Let's get him back in the water and going. Quick release. Back on the fish. Corvina right on the drop. I think we found the school. This guy's a little bigger. As you can see, I was just mentioning with the two teeth, this guy's only got that single one right up front. He already got his knocked out somehow. Some pliers here. All right, guys, really cool. Second little Corvina right there for the morning. Seems like we maybe found the school of them. Back in the water, and on his way. Here he goes. Awesome. This is turning out to be a good day so far. All right, so the tide started to go out right now. We're in this big back flat bay. There's one peninsula and the, the current's really ripping around it, so we should be able to find the fish hanging out on the eddy side of it, which would be the back outgoing side, not the side that the current's coming from. Um, and they should just be hanging out right there waiting for the bait to get pulled out of this bay. And as it hits this eddy, they can sit there and come right up on them. So you'll find them either right where the eddy and current meet 
or out towards the middle where the current's a little bit calmer, they'll hang out in there and kind of move in and out. And then any kind of structure down on the bottom is what they'll hang out on, get out of that current and just sit and wait for the bait to come right, right to them. So the ideal situation is you want to cast your bait up current, maybe not with all the weeds on it, but you want to cast it up current and bring it down with it just like a natural piece of bait and as it pops right by them or comes into the eddy, that's when they'll smack it. back end of this eddy right here. They're just hanging out. Looks like you got another little Corvina here. Right on. Guys, we are on them today. Although they're not the really big ones, these guys get up to about maybe 20 pounds. And uh, normally a good day you catch maybe one of them. So getting three within hour is phenomenal even if they're this, these little guys they're still pretty fun to catch Body of the day right here. Check this guy out. Nice one. It's a nice spotty to start the day. Well, not start the day. We've already got a couple Corvina, but first spotty of the day on the board. It's a pretty solid one. All right. I made a really long paddle today. I knew I wanted to fish this area. It turned out the parking lot to get here was closed, so I started farther in the bay and made a longer paddle. I said, you know, I really want to check this area out. I think I can get some good footage. I think I can get some cool fish. And so far, this has been totally worth it. The way back, it's probably going to take me 45 minutes or an hour to paddle back at the end of the day, but if you get really good fishing, it's totally worth it.
weirdest fish, man. I'd love to catch one. They're supposed to fight real hard, but they just kind of, oh, there's fish. They kind of don't eat anything, the mullet, and they just jump around and they get huge, but. Guys, number four. Number four. I've never caught that many Corvina in one day. Previous to today, I'd only ever gotten one or two. So this is stellar. Let's see if I can get this out, get him going. Don't want to hurt him too much. Get a little picture there on the camera. <laughs> Get them back in the water. All right, there he goes. Gone. Nice. That might be my new PB on the yellowfin croaker. Look at that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a solid one. Probably in the 18 inch range. Let's see if we can get this bait out, maybe measure him. Nice guys, check that out. Really nice yellowfin croaker. Oop. Well, we landed him, got to see him. He got back in the water real quick. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Let's see if it's deep shallow enough to put the pole in. Maybe there'll be a few more hanging out around. It's pretty much always my theory. It never seems to turn out that way. But one of these days, it will. And that was probably the sun was probably right in your eyes, so you probably couldn't see any of that. Hopefully that's not the case.
the multi-species day, guys. We've got another Corvino on. It's number five, I think, for the day. So we got five Corvina, a couple spotted bay bass. Big elephant croaker. I mean, how could you ask for a better day? Almost nobody out. Look at that. Awesome. Let's get him back in the water. All right, guys, we are on our last drift. The wind is picking up a little bit. We've been out here for uh, about five hours already. We're running out of water, running out of food. Got a bunch of fish. It's been a great day, so we're gonna do this last drift. It'll probably take us uh, 30, 40 minutes, and then we'll call it. So let's see what we can catch between here and there. <laughs> 